Evening colleagues, um, we are going to start the presentation now. So I, I want to take the opportunity to thank you all 22 persons who are in this meeting for taking the time to attend this um, very quick and short workshop. I won't be long. Um, I'm running a little bit behind time, but we should be able to catch up. So um, the background to this entire workshop is I am looking at the challenges we face as teachers of visual arts. Conducting demonstration is something that we do as part of our everyday activities within the visual arts classroom. With COVID-19, we, we now have this big question sign, um, questioning a lot of things. For example, how do we now know, conduct our demonstrations to teach our students different techniques and different methods of executing works apart. This is something that I have given a lot of thought. And so this presentation is all about that. It's about showing you a method of conducting your demonstrations remotely. Um, before I start, my senior officer for secondary, Mr. Everett Riley, is in the meeting and at this time i want to welcome him to bring greetings on behalf of the region mr riley you can unmute and go ahead sir yes good afternoon sir but good afternoon colleagues i see mr perry also in the meeting um okay mr perry um, is there good yes and good afternoon teachers and colleagues in education. All right, wonderful. All right, so colleagues, I just want to bring your greetings from the region. Um, want to bring your greetings um, as, as TVET teachers, as visual arts teachers, and as a TVET practitioner myself, I know the challenges and the difficulties that we might be facing right now, especially as it comes to preparing our students for the world of learning, one. Um, in context of this new normal two, and in preparation for the external examination three. Now, the good thing about it though is that you have a very vibrant and active um, education officer that is always seeking um, new and innovative ways to engage students, you see? And he is very active and very always very um, committed to sharing his knowledge with the rest of you. Likewise, I like the collaborative um, spirit that exists among you as teachers um, and in collaboration with your education officer in that you meet often, you have quite frequent discussions and you collaborate quite well as a, as a PLC, as a group. And I want to encourage you to just continue on that trend as you seek ways to better your craft and to, and to help your students to to learn this, this important skill. Um, we're talking about the skills now surrounding the visual arts. Um, and to be frank, sometimes when I look at you and look at how you operate, I am, I am wishing and hoping that other groups, other PLC groups could literally take on your sort of effort, your sort of drive, your sort of tenacity in, in always trying to find ways and means and, and, and mechanisms that work in order for you to, to be able to deliver your content and to pass on your skills to the students that's so very much needed. Today, we, we ventured out in the field. We were looking at students the, who we will call the poorest of the poor among us, who never had it, but through God's grace and through the help of, you know, kind Jamaicans who pay their taxes, I should say, that Tablets were procured for those students on the PATH program, and tablets were delivered today, especially for those um, students in the primary school. Primary schools are um, the ones basically forming the exam cohorts, you know, the grade four, five, and six, those preparing for the PEP exams. And I'm sure, based on what I'm hearing, that literally all students in the near future would be 
eligible and possibly will be getting tablets, you know, to aid them in their preparation as we unfortunately have to remain at home and we cannot gather as a group in schools. Now, educators, for you, I want to thank you, though. I want to really and truly thank you for that commitment and that drive that you have. And as a region, we couldn't be more proud of any group. As a region, we couldn't boast anymore about this group. And as a region, we wish that this group will become that beacon on the hill, you know, that shines the light of example to the other groups. You see? And as such, I will encourage you teachers now in bringing greetings, and it sounds like a speech now, but to really encourage the other teachers at your schools, you know, who may be teaching in the different subject disciplines, to do likewise, to come together as a PLC and to share ideas and to share practices and to bounce skills and knowledge of each other. In this way, we are sure that we will give each other necessary support that every man, every teacher needs to hear that you're not an island. You do not stand alone. And just like how we will say in the motto of my very favorite team in football, you will never walk alone. So the region stands with you and we want to assure you that you do not stand alone. And we want to give you that comfort in knowing that with us, with you, with us there for you, you will never walk alone. Be there for the students. Understand their difficulties. Understand the, the whole issue surrounding why we can't gather, even in small groups right now in Jamaica. Understand that as much as parents may seem to be in love with you at this time, if we were to ever cause groups together and the first two or three children that goes home with the disease, the schools and the teachers will be blamed. I can tell you that. So we have to be very careful. We have to be very guarded in our approach as we love and care. But we have to keep on trying and keep on innovating. And as a region of innovators, this is what we do. So I give you my blessings. And on behalf of the region, I give you my love. Keep it up and just understand that you're not walking alone. We're right here with you. All right, colleagues. So enjoy your training. I will be sitting in because I want to learn too. So enjoy your training and just understand that we're always here for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Riley, for those encouraging words. Um, so colleagues, without any further waiting, I'm going to get right into this presentation. So these are the different areas that we were going to be looking at today. So it's a very short presentation. I'm going to be showing you um, a way to set up a very simple demonstration area. We're going to be using an app that is called Let's View that will connect your demonstration area to your computer. We are going to look at the Google Meet extension for Chrome, which can show you how to use your breakout rooms to give feedback to your students. So those are the talking points that I'm going to be covering. And everything is in um, a sort of a step-by-step -step manner. So um, I want to thank you for coming again. And um, this manual, I've also developed a manual which I will share with all persons who are a part of this meeting. Um, to increase the sharing, I would like you to post your email address in the chat. I know there are some persons here that are not necessarily from my region, but you are teachers of visual arts. And so I am not, um, I, I have no problem with that because it's one Jamaica and we all need to get going. All right, so post your your email addresses so I can share the manual with you. Okay, so the first part of my presentation deals with setting up your demonstration area. Now, most of us, we own smartphones, right? And we actually have 
a selfie stick. If you don't have a stealthy stick, don't worry about it. I know we have lots of um, mop sticks probably around the place or anything that we could use to um, attach our phones. We are all teachers of visual arts in this um, setting here, and I know we're all creative people. So to set up your um, demonstration area, one of the items that you will need is a selfie stick. I know some persons might have, some persons might not have it. You will need a smartphone, not necessarily a Samsung device. It can be any, it can be any smartphone, so don't worry about it. You are going to also need your laptop. Nothing fancy. The, the software we're going to be using is um, a freeware. So Let's View is the software that we're going to be downloading and installing. You don't need to do it right now. I will share my presentation. Now, Open Camera, this is also um, an app that we're going to be looking at. And let me just give you some context. Open Camera is actually better than the camera app on your smart device. This gives you full control of what the lens in the phone can actually do. You can change your white balance and manually control everything on the phone. So, and the main reason for using this is that it does not time out. And I will um, explain a little bit later in the presentation why that is. So this is my really rough illustration of a sort of demonstration area setup so here you have your selfie stick i know my person might not be showing on screen but if you just look at the diagram you'll notice that we have the phone mounted mounted um on the selfie stick and it's pointing down on a demonstration area now at home, we might have books and maybe, maybe a, a five-gallon bucket or something that we can use to um, place the phone above the demonstration area. Most of us, we will have our um, work area, maybe a little kitchen table, maybe um, a dresser. We just have to be um, flexible in terms of how we try to set this up. And also, you will need your, your laptop. Right, so this is um, a basic um, illustration of how your demonstration area should appear, right? Okay, so let me just go to the next one. So installing the Open Camera app, it's very easy to install for the persons who are not so familiar with installing software. I have prepared the basic um steps for you so from your phone screen you will need to go to your your app store right and that's the app store icon right there once you are in you're going to type open camera right now in the app store sometimes you might get a little bit confused because there are many apps sometimes with the same name and this is the reason for my demonstration here so once you get in and you have selected open camera as the app, ensure that it says here Mark Harman, right? So that's the right one that you need to select. Once you click on the install button, you you'll notice that it will start its um, installation. Once you're done, you'll click open. And once you have it open, uh, you will need to... Excuse me, Mr. Hill. Yes, Ms. Shakes, go ahead. Sorry, would you, would you uh, repeat what you said about what we should look for, the correct one, please, that part. What, what, what do you mean, sir? I'm not hearing you clearly. No, I am saying you said that there are many versions. So I'm just asking if you could just repeat the correct version for me, because I'm making a note as you go along. Okay, I I'm going to be sharing this with you, so don't worry about it, Miss. I will. I'm sharing a manual with everyone who attends the the training here, so I, you you will have access to that. All right. All right. Okay. Yes. Don't worry about it. I'm sharing everything that is that you are seeing here. All right. So once you click 
to open that app. There are some permissions that you you have to allow for the app to function, right? All of us, um, from time to time, we actually install apps and we need to give the app permission to record video and audio. So that's what this step is. So it will also require access to media files because this app actually saves different things on your images and videos on your device. So once everything is done, you should see a message um, looking something like this. And of course, you would go ahead and you click OK. Now, once you click OK on the app, those are my beautiful hands, you will see your demonstration area. So of course, the, the um, illustration of the demonstration area earlier you would have noticed that your phone would be mounted above pointing down on your demonstration area. So if you look at my image here, you will notice that I am now able to, to demonstrate a lot of different things that we do in art. So for example, I could use this to demonstrate maybe the color wheel, the value scale, we could demonstrate portage, you name it, there are a lot of things that we could demonstrate using this setup, right? So um, just to encourage a little bit of interactivity, could you post in the chat any other topics that you think we could demonstrate using this method? You can just um, type it in the chat. I know we are all teachers of visual arts. I, I've just scratched the surface of, you know, some things that we could actually demonstrate. So just post something in the chat. I see somebody saying ceramics techniques, that's extremely um, good. Very nice, very nice. All right, so you can continue to post in the chat, and it's okay. So getting ready for your remote demonstration. So of course you need to install the Let's View app on both your devices. And so I'm going to be showing you step-by-step step how you go about doing that. So on the computer, what you need to do is to type into your Google or your Mozilla search engine, Let's View for Windows. Now, Let's View can also work on Apple devices. So for the persons who have um, an Apple phone, don't worry about it. There is also a version for that. All right? So once you click on Let's View, you will be taken to the website where you can download the software for your phone, right? Once that is done, you will get this um, message to say whether or not you want to save the file. Once it is downloaded, what you want to do is to double click that file to run the executable, right? And of course, you want to select the language. so you are going to keep it at English. I know some of this might not seem as if something I should be telling you, but I can guarantee you sometimes we install software and we don't do it properly and so we run into problems. So I'm here to guide you with that. All right, so once you select that, you should see um, a dialog box similar to the one on screen. And what you will do is to just click Next. Now, for most software, they have um, some license agreement. Most times when you get to this screen, it will have that dot in the I do not accept agreement um, box because they actually want you to click that you're accepting the agreement. So once you click, once you click on accept that agreement, what you will do is to click next. And of course, um, an installation folder will be set up for you on the computer. And it's just a matter of clicking next. If you want, you can create um, a desktop icon and you can select next and install, right? So once you have selected your install, you'll notice that um, there is a green bar running along to install the program. And once you're done, that would be um, fully 
green, right? So it means the program is now installed on your computer. I just got word from Mr. Bedassi that his power went just a while ago, but it, it has returned, so he's trying to get back online. So in the meantime, uh, we could encourage some discussion until he returns as it relates to how we can apply the use of this uh, new technology that he's sharing with us. So Khaleesi Turner, do you want to start? Tell us some ideas that are turning over in your mind right now as you think about this. What's up, Perry? Are we still here? Uh, Mr. Riley? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Mr. You know, Pedassi um, has a power outage, so he's trying to get back on now. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You're talking about things that may be churning in our minds, right? Yeah. And for some time, I have grappled with, with how how we actually can literally, you know, share, um, share what, especially when we're trying to write or so on, you know, um, I may not be looking at it from a visual art perspective, but yeah. I may be looking at it You're from the case of a, yes. Go, go ahead, so I'm listening to you. From from a, a situation in which I try to help some some teachers, some primary school teachers, to um. To, to teach kids how to write from a whiteboard. The whiteboard um, sharing in Zoom or, 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 or on the same Google Meet something here. And, it, you know, it's really difficult. So for me, uh, the, what I'm liking is the fact that this thing can capture the, the person literally writing by hand, you know, guiding students. And I am here, to be honest, looking at it, for the sake of helping especially some primary school teachers at the lower school level. You understand? So, Mr. Bedassi, if you're here, sir, you're back in? Kindly hurry up, I, sir. Mr. Bedassi, <laughs> and, be here now. Yes. And let us get to understand this thing because we really, we have some teachers out there really struggling. And for visual arts teachers, I understand why they're so quiet because... I mean, this, this this would have been somewhat groundbreaking for many of them, mm -hmm. um, given the situation that we face right now. You know, I, Mr. Riley, I think this this app should be shared with with other um, teachers, primary, as I mentioned, secondary teachers to other subject areas, because right. there are other persons who need to demonstrate stuff, and this method seems to be an appropriate method to use. Exactly. You know? Um, I know that in technical drawing, we have to do lettering and so on. That was something yeah. that seemed to be a good place to demonstrate. Yes. Excuse me. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. I'd like to ask, can this setup be done with a um, tablet instead of a phone? Because, to be honest, my poor little phone can't take a message. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> we have, <laughs> I can't download anything else on it, I'm thinking. Um, so until I get a chance to upgrade, is it something that you can, um, do you think is something that can happen with a tablet? The school has given us a tablet, fortunately, and I'd like to use more, use it more. Do you re recommend it? Is, is it possible? What, what do you think? Well, uh, yes, please. Yeah. Oh, right. so I'm, I'm back in. I had a little power outage. Yes, miss, you can actually use a tablet. The, the one thing that would um, sort of prevent you, though, is that you would need um, the arm to grab that tablet, right? Which I think most stores here might have. So you should be able to use a tablet to do this. Otherwise, you might need to do um, um, Are you in Kingston or are you in Montego Bay? Clarendon. Clarendon. All right, well, you might need to go into Kingston to... Um, Pavilion Mall, I think um, what's new might sell those um, okay. arms for the tablet. Okay. So it's one thing, or you could order it online. Okay. All right. Yeah, but there are arms for the tablet that you could actually use, and the tablet would be great because it's a much larger screen. So do you, is, would it be the same process as what you described for the phone? So the same process, the same process. So, um, for me to just recap here, so colleagues, I was just demonstrating to you the step-by-step -step process of how you would install Let's View on your 
computer, right? So where I was before everything went was I was at the screen where you now have your program fully installed, right? So once that is done, you can launch the launch the Let's View app and you can select phone screen mirroring. Now there's also something else I need to tell you about this app. You can actually use this app to control the computer screen. So if you go computer screen mirroring, the phone becomes a remote for the computer. So that's just a little tip I will share with you. Um, we're all creative people and we might find some application for that. All right, so install the SD on the phone. It might be um, a quicker and simpler process. So it's just a matter of going to your Play Store, right? And typing in Let's View. So of course, you know, the app with the most download sometimes is the actual, the right one, right? Excuse me, Miss. I want to yes, Miss, go ahead. Is this, this, is this similar to installing an IV cam both on your phone IV and your cam. laptop? I am not familiar with what that is. I'm not sure what an IV cam is, but what I can tell you is that this software is a mirroring oh, tool, it's, it's, right? It's, 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 oh, it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, thanks, Mark. Yes, it's something that you would use to mirror your, mirror your screen, all right? All right, so once we have, once we click on our install button here, you, you will go through the process of installing, and so I've outlined it here for you what that um, looks like. And then, of course, you can open your app. Now, connecting both devices. Now, before I get into this section, I just want to let you know that um, you would have your phone already mounted to your, to your selfie stick, and you have your demonstration area set up. Now, one thing that you must ensure is that you're not getting the image um, upside down. So sometimes you might need to go and rotate the phone in the selfie stick or whatever you have holding it. So when you put both hands down, everything on screen is right side up. So that, that's just one tip I need to provide to everyone here. So connecting both devices, it's really um, simple. It's simple, but it might catch some people off guard. So what I've done here is to outline the detailed steps that you will take to do that. So the first thing that you need to have done is that um, we need to have both devices connected to the same Wi-Fi network, right? That's how the screen is mirrored, right? It communicates through the Wi-Fi. So you need to have them on the same network, right? Now, once you have that, what you will do is to just open the Let's View app on the phone, and you would see your IP address and whatever the name of the um, network is. And below, you would see that the phone is searching for a connection, right? So once once it finds a connection, you you would then go over to your computer. Also, open the app on the computer. Go back to the phone, and once you find that connection, down at the bottom, you would see um, something coming up to say, let's view, and the name of the device will be there. So let's view Marie, for example, would be here, based on what you call your device. Let's view Samsung Galaxy, whatever it is, would be here, right? So that's what this step is. So once you have... Um, selected phone screen mirroring notice you can also mirror the computer screen so the option that we are working with is phone screen mirroring so once you have that done you you need to allow um some permissions so of course you want to allow it to record audio now the possibility here that i want to point out to everyone is that you can actually record your demonstration on your phone the computer screen is just there to guide you so you can actually see what you are doing, right? So it's, a, it's, it's like an extra monitor for you, right? So um, you want to allow the permissions and you want to go ahead and click start now. 
Now, once you do that on your computer screen, you will see um, the shape of the phone screen appear and it's going to have this window in it, right? Now, once you are seeing that window, you need to press that um, home button on the phone screen so it can take you directly to your home screen on the phone, right? So this is um, a screenshot of what will happen once you press the home screen. Now, once you start sliding your fingers and pinching and zooming on your actual device, everything that you do will be shown on the computer as well. Now, the rotation of the screen to the landscape format will happen when you actually open the open camera up. So once you click that and you open it, I'm just reminding you here that you need to have your you need to have your phone mounted above your demonstration area, right? So this is just to remind you. Now, once you have everything mounted, you you will see your your um, demonstration area set up with whatever materials and tools you have. All of that will be displayed, similar to the image that I showed before both hands um, in the frame, right? Now, um, added to this, you can also you can also show your webcam. So just like we're having this meeting, if I want to demonstrate to my students, I could be showing my webcam where you are seeing my face. And um, what I can go ahead and do is to share my screen, but select the Let's View app window so you can see my demonstration area, right? So that's how this works. So that's for the persons who like showing um their webcam it's not necessary but um i find that some students might find it a little bit more engaging if you actually are showing your video um in one window and in the other window you are demonstrating um a tool or technique or whatever it is that you are doing so breakout rooms this is one of the important things i want to introduce all visual arts teachers to so there is a breakout room extension for Google Meet. Recently, Google G Suite for Education actually released um, an official breakout room, but it's only available to companies that have bought into the enterprise version, right? So for now, this is the fix, and this is what we will use. So I'm going to be showing you now how you go about getting breakout rooms. Now, breakout rooms are great for giving one-on-one -on -one feedback to students, right? So, for, for doing this, you will definitely need um, the Google Chrome browser. So, of course, we all know that Google works best with Google. So, you need your Google Chrome browser. You will need your, your um, meeting app the one we are using currently, and you need your breakout rooms extension. So once to get your breakout room extension, what you need to do is to go to your web browser, type Google Meet breakout rooms, and you will be, will, will be taken to the Chrome web store where you can, add, you can add this extension. Once you click that, you should see um, this is the message here to add extension. And um, there's a little jigsaw puzzle icon in the top right-hand corner of your Chrome browser. That's where all your extensions are stored, right? Once you have that, you go to that um, little area, little puzzle shape. Once you click that, you will notice that I actually use Bitmoji and I use Google Breakout Rooms. So once you launch the breakout room, you will see something like this appear. Now from this tab, you can actually schedule your Google Meet and you can create your breakout room. So I'm going to be showing you step by step how we go about doing that. So to set up the room, you click on the room tab. And once you click there, you would go to that green icon there. That is the add room icon. 
And what you want to do is to add um, a main room. So the main room is where you present from, right? So I put there grade 10. Um, I could have put visual arts, grade 10 visual arts book, for example. That, that would be something good. And then you add a few more rooms. So for example, for the persons who are very fortunate, you might have um, five or so students in your class. And so what you're able to do is to create different rooms um, with the name of each student. Because um, when it's time to give feedback, you want to be able to give one-on-one -on -one feedback. You know, just like um, in face-to-face, um, some students don't necessarily like when you're giving them a review on what to do and other persons are here and everything. So the breakout room is, is sort of like that private space that you can now um, use to engage your students one-on-one. -on -one. So if it is that you have five, um, 10, 15 students, this is a method that you can use. So um, just for demo purposes, you notice I, I have um, some students and I've created I've created some breakout rooms for them. Now, once you have that done, you once you click save, you will notice that there are some um, there are links that are generated for each room. So that is what this extension actually does. It actually generates all the Google Meet um, extension. So all of those. URLs will start different meetings. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and copy this if it is that you are using Google Classroom. Um, I know many persons are very much competent in using Google Classroom. What you can do is to go ahead and copy the URL and assign it to the students individually when you have um, a session. So. That's what's happening right here. So you could go ahead, highlight and copy, right? And you go back to your Google Classroom and set everything up. Now, it's very important that you go over to your settings and ensure that everything says open tabs in same window. If you don't do this, you will have many tabs that will pop up on your screen, right? So that's a tip. Now, starting a meeting, it's quite easy with um, the breakout rooms extension. So if it is that you have 5, 10, 15 breakout rooms, you go down to that tab and you select the number of breakout rooms that you want to start. Once you have that selected, what you can go ahead and do is to click Open Sync Boat. Now, what that will do, it will open the main room along with all breakout rooms. So if you look on my um, screen here, you will notice that there's a main room where Sasha, Tony, Johnny, Elizabeth, and Tom. Now, all of the, all the links, once you give the students the links and you have opened the breakout room, once they click their link, they will join and they will be in their assigned room, right? So that, that's um, how that works. Now, if it is that you click start and you see six, seven different tabs popping up, again, I'm just reminding you that you just need to go over to settings and click that little area that says tabs, same window, right? So you're able to easily switch between the breakout rooms. Now, the tab that we have here that says main, it's a slider that you can pull. And what that will do is to switch you from different rooms. So if it is that you want to give um, reviews to different students, you can um, flip this tab, enter that room, and give your review. So I'm going to be showing you the settings that you need to have um, activated to do this. So first of all, um, on the main tab that we are looking at here, this is where you can unmute yourself in the main room. So you are able to unmute, you are able to um, enable your sound and actually show your video in the main room. Now, one functionality that is not yet available 
is that you can't present to every room. So if you notice, there is no um, button here to present to all rooms. So that's just one downside of using it, but I guarantee you this is uh, much better than what we have, right? So to stop and start your camera, of course, we know what these icons do. Now, when you want to broadcast to all rooms, this is the section that you go to, right? And um, what you're able to do is, if you unmute, open your camera here, and um, open your microphone in this section, once you start speaking, all persons in all five rooms are going to be hearing you. That's what this tab does, right? Um, now, there are a few more tabs here. Um, don't let them scare you. They do some very simple things. So, for example, this tab here just explains how to use the entire um, extension. That's what it does. Um, the one that is here, it actually shows you all the links that were generated for the different breakout rooms. So this is also um, a section that you can come to copy all the links and paste them um, to the student in the Google Classroom, right? Now, um, this tab here, the, the one that is being displayed, mute and remove participants. Um, it doesn't necessarily do that. What is in this tab is a list of icons and what they do, right? So it doesn't actually mute and remove anyone. So I'm just letting everyone know that. Now, this tab that says report, this is where everything is so useful. Now, for example, um, if you notice, you, you are able to look at your reports. So the reports include all attendees to your meeting. And in this area, you can actually download um, an Excel document with the participants' attendance. You can look at different assignments, and you can look at the groups that you have created. So that's a very useful tab, right? So once you click it, you will notice that um, you can get your Excel document, as I said before, and you once you click that, it will download something with um, the attendance information, right? So participants are attendance, so this is our data. So when you need data for your mark book, this is where you come, right? Now, um, the simple icon at the top here, all it does is to um, reduce the size of the window. Just need to show you that. Um, the one that says start class here, what it will do is to show you all your breakout rooms once you click it. Right? Now, recording your demonstration. This is a fun part. So, you would have your demonstration where you're set up. You have your meeting started, and now you are ready to record what you are doing. Now, just as a reminder, you want to ensure that both devices are connected to the same network. You have the open camera up opened, and you have mounted it, and everything is right side up. And you are actually using the Google Chrome browser. Now, if you are not using Google Chrome, you will not have access to the Breakout Rooms extension. And of course, you want to start your meeting. Now, once you have your meeting started, you want to go over to the Present Now button. You want to present a window. There are different things that can happen if you select um, another option. So you want to present a window. And what you want to do is to look for the thumbnail of your camera app, which, is, which would be Let's View. So Let's View will be showing your viewfinder on the camera app and so you want to look for let's view in the list and you want to select that now once you have that selected you want to click share right now once you have share set up this is something a lot of persons don't know when you see this screen that says you are you are presenting to everyone it's all good for the persons who you are presenting to but you are not able to see what you are presenting so I want to show you this little tip here. What you need to do is to go up here and you want to pin your presentation so you can also see what you're demonstrating to the students, right? All right, so 
that's my um my let's view up once i have selected it as the tab that i want to present so there you can see my beautiful hands and i have some coins there um maybe about to do some footage or something to demonstrate right no one-on-one -on -one feedback this is the juicy part i know some a lot of persons are probably excited about this now one-on-one -on -one feedback is just a matter of navigating your breakout rooms so what you must ensure is that you are not broadcasting to all rooms so what you want to do is to go down to this tab first and ensure that everything is off so for example you have done your introduction to your lesson and everyone is now off to work what you want to do is to first of all mute your tabs that says um, broadcast to all rooms you don't want to be doing that because you are now walking over in the digital space to each student to now provide your feedback so you want to ensure that everything here is off next thing you want to do is to drag that slider so you can select the student that you want to give that one-on-one -on -one feedback to right so this is what takes you from the different rooms so once you once you have that done you can now go ahead and um unmute your mic your video and start broadcasting your audio now also what you can do is to when you are ready, i already showed you that you need to be sharing your screen so again you can start presenting your screen and of course you might want to set up and check your um, meeting security to ensure that um, if you want the student to be able to share their screen, you need to come here and check the setting that says everyone can share their screen. If it is that you don't want this to happen, you go to your meeting security button here and you can turn that off, right? Um, most times you might have a breakout room with maybe one to five students. That's what I would do. Um, I know some schools, you might have more. Um, how you navigate that is totally up to you, but sometimes you might want to sh turn off the option that says um, participants can share their screen. All right, so once you have that done, you can um, have everyone doing what they want here i think my that's not the end of my presentation you know i think there's another slide somewhere here all right so once you have your meeting and everything set up properly you can um start conducting your reviews so this is the one-on-one -on -one space so you can jump now between the different rooms to provide the feedback that you want to give. Um, starting your webcam um, could be an option. It's something that um, a lot of persons do. Start your webcam. If the students are very familiar with you, they, they will be very happy to see your face and also your hands, showing them how to create. All right, so I believe, yes, I have come to the end of my presentation. This is the last slide actually. And so this is something that I want to encourage everyone to try out using your breakout rooms with your demonstration area um, to effectively provide instruction to your students. At this time, I, I know we're a little bit over time. We're four minutes over time actually. Um, I want to take a few questions. So if it is that you have any questions, you can now go ahead and mute your microphone and let us have dialogue. So this is the end of my presentation. Let us start. Yes, go, go ahead. Go ahead, miss. Good evening, everyone. Um, I like the breakout room, but my question is this. Is there a limit to the amount of students you have? I have a class of 31 students. Can, it, can I manage so many students? 
All right, so based on my research so far, I don't recognize that there's a limit just yet. I believe you can create as much breakout rooms as you can manage, right? So maybe what you want to do is to group students, maybe five in a breakout room, or you can schedule different meetings to, to, um, to interact with different students. Because it can be a little bit much if you have too many um, breakout rooms, you know, jumping from one room to the next to the next, right? So that's something for us to consider, but great question. Anyone else? Any more questions? Good, uh, good evening. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, go ahead, I'm hearing you. Okay, um, I was wondering if the app would have to be installed on students' devices for them to be a part of the breakout rooms. No, it doesn't have to be installed on your device. Okay, so once, okay. You are going to the demonstration, so you have to have that done, right? Okay. So it so they would they would watch the demonstration through um live, right? It would be done live. Yes, through your Google's um meeting. Okay. That's how you do that. Okay. So you can share your camera so you can see your face. Share your yes. app demonstrations where you are showing, right? Okay. So does your um does the manual cover this uh, this step by step procedure that you showed us today? Yes, sir. You are actually looking at the manual, which I'm to share with everyone. Okay, great. All right. Thanks again, sir. No problem. No problem. Mister Bedasi. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, let us say I have a class of 15 students, and um, I have three breakout rooms, five each. If the next time I'm going to do another demonstration, I want the group to be reassigned. That means I want to take out them from each group, put them in another group, and so on. Will this allow me to start all over? Mr. Perry, um, we are in your emails. Um, I'm getting some Mario, feedback and I'm not speaking a lot. Uh, Mario, Peter, can uh, mic is open. It is telling the feedback. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Go ahead, Mr. Perry. Okay. Sounding much better, I believe. Okay, Mr. Perry. All right. I'm saying that I have... Yes, sir. Why you do this scenario? Right. Um, I have 15 students in my class. And I use three breakout rooms the first time. For my for my demonstration. Now I'm coming back to another class or another topic. I want to reassign the students now, change the group that they were in. Do I have to start all over, or can I go back in those um, three rooms, take out some students, and reassign them? Is that possible? Yes, it is possible. Um, once you have your um, breakout rooms extension, what you can do is to keep using the same um, link for different um, persons. Because what you should be able to do, let's see if I can go back. You should be able to change the name of the breakout room, for example. Right? So that's one thing that you could do, is to, you see where you see the names? Let me see if I can find that section. You should be able to just change the names. So I, I gave my breakout rooms names, but um, you can change that. You don't need to have the same name. Like I had um, Tom, Elizabeth, and so on and so forth. You, you can change the names. All right, here it is. So for example, I have my main room, and then I have Sasha, Tony, Johnny, Elizabeth. I can actually change the name of the room and keep the same link. Or what I can do is to 
just create some new links. So that's an um, option that you have, right? But you know, to make life easy, you can reuse these links, right? That answers your question, sir? Yes, somewhat, yes. I, I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. All right, good, good, good. So, well, Any other I, questions coming? Just to continue, to follow up until the others are coming in. It therefore means that if every time I'm going to do another demonstration, I don't have to set up from scratch then with this particular... No, class. you don't need to go back to all of this um, procedure here. Um, I think based on teacher, you, you know how your program is um, set up, right? So what you can do is to you know, set up your your breakout rooms in such a way that you can recycle the links and reuse those um, codes. If it is that students um, who you have um, used the breakout room with still has the link, then that might be um, a reason to change it, right? But I believe you can um, recycle them. Any other questions? Comments? Sir, but I say, I am, I yes, am checking for this extension, you see? But it seems I'm limited to the extensions I can get. All right. So they directed. You have, you have other extensions installed already. Um, not really. So they, they directed me now to Chrome Web Store. Oh yes, that should happen. And guess what I'm I'm seeing? I'm seeing Google Meet Plus. Oh, I'm not sure what you have on there. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened there, but um, if you should follow the instructions in the manual here, okay. you should um, you should be successful because that's exactly the procedure to install the breakout room. Um, so, good evening. any other questions or comments? Hello, hello, sir. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, hi. Yes, here you go. Uh, with the little that I know, um, I think sometimes, especially if you are given a domain from your school, I think certain extensions have to be allowed by the admin. That uh, so is that is not like um, worse if you're using like um, your school, you know, like uh, Glenmuir.com or you, you understand what I'm saying? If you're using it, I think certain, yes, certain I um, extensions yeah. have to be enabled That's by true. your admin. So so that may be a problem. That's true, Lisa Gail. Um, and with the ministry, what the administrator has told us is that where we find a good extension that um, teachers may recommend, what you can do, you can literally speak to your officers for them to suggest to the, the, the or administrators at the ministry for that extension to be included in the in the pack from the MOE schools um, web. Of, um, should I say? Um, let's call it um, credentials. Then let's put it that way. But if, for example, you, you, you teachers find extensions that work for them and they want to recommend that we include it with the MOE schools package, then you just need to say it to your regional office for that suggestion to be made to the administrator at the ministry for them to, to, to consider including that extension for it to be available for our teachers. Follow? All right. So yes, sir. I, I'm Thank you. I'm, I'm far. I'm, I'm in the kitchen. Okay, yeah. sir. Okay. Okay. Another thing, though, I have tested this with my um, MOE schools email, and it, there's no restriction on on it for me. So I'm I'm not sure what I'm not sure if that is so for anyone, but um, if there's a restriction, of course, you know, we 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 have. As Mr. Riley said, there, there, um, you can make a recommendation so we can get this to you. But so far, I have tested it, and I don't believe there are any um, restrictions on the MOE schools um, domain. 
If it is that there's a restriction, what you can do is to just start your meeting using your regular um, email addresses because all you're doing is um, engaging your students that way, right? So that's how work around if you encounter that problem. Any other questions, questions comments? comments? I have a question, sir. Um, when you were mentioning the breakout rooms, yes, miss, go ahead. When you were mentioning the breakout rooms, um, I noticed you mentioned um, putting the students in groups, for example, groups of five. So when you go into each room, um, is it that you're seeing all five or you're looking at the students individually? Okay, so how that works is if you, somebody needs to mute, if you, if you give, the, for example, you have your Google Classroom and you want a set of five students in one breakout room, what you will do is to share that link with those five students only. And so when they join the meeting, they, they are grouped into that um, particular breakout room, right? Okay. Understood. Yeah, so Thank that's you. all you need. Okay. So, sir, when, you, when you're checking on them, would you see those five students, you know, or what? Yes, you, you'll see them there. Like, like you have it on screen now where you have your people and your chat you are going to see the number of persons in that breakout room. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay, no problem. Any other questions, comments, or can we move to close? Oh, I, I didn't see. I want to acknowledge the presence of my regional director, Dr. Michelle Pinock. Dr. Pinock, welcome. I know you joined um, a little bit late. Good night, Mr. Bedassi. Good night to our devoted um, educators. Unfortunately, I was not here for the entire presentation, and so I await the upload on your YouTube channel so that I'll be able to follow. I want to say to you, Mr. Bedesi, thank you very much for exploring and um, finding different applications, and not just finding them, but just being so diligent, patient in organizing and ensuring that we actually learn about these different applications. We do appreciate the work that you are doing and the fact that you actually arrange for these sessions. I want to just remind us all on this meeting that it's not the numbers on a meeting that will really cause us to impact the lives of students. And so let us not um, be downhearted when we don't see large numbers of persons. I'm one of those persons that believe that you, if, if it's even just one person, they will take the message on. And so I want to just encourage you, Mr. Bedesi, and to say thank you for exploring and then bringing us to a new point in our lives where we're able to see, especially visual arts being taught from a virtual space. It's not the ideal, but it is going to have to do for now. So I want to say thank you very much, sir. And I ask you to continue to um, do what you're doing. And to the participants on this meeting, I ask you please to just comment, leave a comment um, in the chat so that we can actually get some feedback. And in your comment, if you can just tell us, you know, 
which school you're connected to or which region you're connected to so that we're able to understand the kind of impact that we're having. All right, so thank you very much, Mr. Bedassi. Thank you for that, Dr. Pinock. So colleagues, if there are no other questions or comments, um, I might move to end the meeting soon. Anybody else? Welcome. Okay, I see some some things are being posted in the chat. Okay, go ahead. Please ensure that you um, share with me your email address. What I'm going to do for you, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share in the chat the presentation, aka the manual. So um, it's made available to all persons that are in attendance. So that's my gift to everyone. So look out for the presentation in the chat. Also, um, in, in um, a few days, I will share this um, recording on YouTube so you can go back and watch if needs be. All right, so look, in the, look out in the chat for the manual which I'm going to make available to everyone. Thanks again, Mr. Bedassi. Great job. Mr. Bedassi, you're still there? Mr. Riley, Mr. Bedassi. Mr. Bedassi, run, gone, pray. <laughs> no, 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 I just got kicked out. I am back, I am back. Yes, oh, okay. I just got kicked out. Yeah, I am back. happened to me a while ago, too. All right. You know, I'm also looking at this, this, um, this app on the camera. I think it can work well for those who are doing practical, maybe like building technology um you know um engineering anything like that they can set up their camera just the same and do these demonstrations to their uh, for their students or or create create some sort of video because i said we can record the demonstration right so we can do these things and and and, and it works for the other practical areas not only for the the, the visual arts people mr no, you understand my excitement initially mr perry all right it's so maybe mr, mr. bedas is trading on some things that he doesn't even know well, it's a TV presentation over. Okay, then, guys. Um, somebody was saying something? Yeah, I was telling me Mr. Bedassi left again. I got kicked out again. Oh, Mr. Bedassi gone again? <laughs> it's, a good thing. it's been recorded, so whatever we say, China will be used against us if it is that good. <laughs> it is that now. Um, okay, okay, colleagues, I'm not able to to share the presentation in the chat for some reason i'm not sure what's happening so um please remember to post your email addresses in the chat so i can send this to you Right, that was captured beautifully. Yes, Miss Stone, thank you for that. So um, I hope everyone has posted their email addresses. I promise I will um, email you um, by tomorrow. So please give me your emails. And once you have this document in hand, share, 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 share. 
Don't be afraid to share it. Okay, young people, so you take care. Um, that's the name of so, but that's it. Once again, big up yourself. So, Perry, big up yourself. Okay. Teachers, keep on pressing on, keep on doing your thing. Um, keep the PLC alive. And I'm sure your efforts, as I said before, will be replicated by other groups. All right? Have a good afternoon. A good evening, I should say. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, right. and have a good one. All right. We'll be good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.